Hi, my name is Michael. I'm responsible for the Kidak Data Acquisition System. In this role, I'm often asked which products do I need for my measurement, for example, to measure the acceleration on the wing. My answer is always, it depends. Selecting the right components for a measuring chain is only possible if you know the crucial parameters. For that, I've created a useful checklist which helps to gather the required information. Let's start with an overview of the full measuring chain. The sensor converts the physical signal into an electrical signal, for example a force, pressure or like this one, acceleration. The cable looks like an no-brainer and is often underestimated, but depending on the application it may have a crucial influence on the measurement. A good cabling helps a lot to reduce noise and interfering signals. The signal conditioning stage is used to transform the analog signal before converting it to digital. This normally includes amplification and filtering. The data acquisition converts the analog input signal into digital values and stores it for further processing. Visualization and analysis, this is the actual goal of the measurement. Just some additional comments to complete the picture. Depending on the measurement and application, sensors with integrated electronics are available. With that, additional signal conditioning or even digitalization may become obsolete. Very common today is that data acquisition devices already include a full signal conditioning stage, but there are still cases with special requirements where an external signal conditioning can make sense. Now to the promised checklist. Let's start with sensors and cables. The physical measurement is given in most cases. Nevertheless, it's worth to think about what insights do I want to get with my measurement and what's the best way to get the required data. For most measurements, there are several sensor technologies available, each with different advantages or disadvantages, depending on the application. What signal do I expect? What will be my amplitude or signal range? What peak values may occur? Slow signals, fast signals, in which frequency range I want to measure? Are there peaks or spikes with high signal frequency or harmonics? Mounting. This is very dependent on the measurement. For example, acceleration. How can I mount the sensor? Can I bolt it or should it be bonded with wax? Then about ambient conditions. What is the expected temperature range? Are there fluids or gases which are potentially harmful for the sensor? Cabling may be very important, as mentioned before. Not only the length and connectors, but also about electromagnetic influences. Shielded cables or twisted pair for differential signals or the potential ground loops. On the electronic side, what is the electrical signal from the sensor and what is the range? Do I need special amplification like for strain gauges or piezoelectric sensors? Is it an active sensor which needs powering, for example IEP sensors or piezoresistive transmitters? Depending on the expected signal bandwidth, which sampling rate makes sense? Higher is better, yes, but also creates a lot of data. Therefore, select a feasible value for your application. With very small signals, the signal to noise ratio may be critical. What is the smallest signal I want to measure? Do I need to pay special attention to low noise signal conditioning? And also the location of the equipment. How big is my setup under test? Are there measuring points far away from each other? Do I need multiple devices which can be connected through a network? As you see, there are a lot of questions to clarify while selecting a measuring chain. I hope this checklist helps you to find the right components. And keep in mind, a measuring chain is like a traditional chain. It is only as strong as its weakest link. In case you want to know more about sensors or other Kistler measuring equipment like KIDAC, just reach out to your local Kistler contact.